spent two weeks chasing storms in Argentina. One of the many perks of this nomadic lifestyle is all the surprises. You never really know what you're gonna see or where you're gonna end up. Welcome to our $5 hotel. The other side of this coin, run into it, is that you often have to breeze through beautiful places. There never seems to be enough time to eat, sleep, or take in the incredible scenery and culture. In this fast-paced adventure, we blaze through 10,000 kilometers of random beauty while storm chasing in Argentina. Our first big surprise in Argentina was that we needed to be in Uruguay. With zero time to enjoy Buenos Aires, we made a dash for the big storms forecast in the neighboring country. This is looking scary. Look at that. While trying to keep ahead of this dangerous storm, we found ourselves at a toll booth without the native currency. Okay. Let's pull up. It might just take a picture and then go. And no. Hola. Hola. Teniste el viaje? Argentino pesos, okay? Tiene que pasar acá con tarjeta nomás. Credito. Sí. Estacionaje pasa por allá. ¿Viste dónde están los conos tirados? Okay. While the friendly officers charged our credit card 10 cents, the storm drifted out of reach. Hola de Uruguay. Uruguay? Uruguay. 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 <laughs> but missing out on the powerful windstorm appeared to be a blessing. Damn. Yeah, they're okay. In many places, the chase country in Argentina reminded us of Tornado Alley. So a lot like Kansas at home, you got the sandy roads, the green crops, and the bugs on the window. But the further north we drove, the more the signs. We weren't in Kansas anymore. Awesome. Yeah. Somewhere from deep in the jungle, Scott and I could hear a familiar and unnerving sound distant roar, not unlike the largest tornadoes we've encountered. Iguazu Falls is the largest system of waterfalls in the world. Not to be confused with the largest curtain of falling water, Victoria Falls in Africa, or the tallest waterfall, Angel Falls in Venezuela. Depending on rainfall, there can be between 150 and 300 smaller waterfalls in this system. Trekking well-designed trails and bridges, we cross paths with fascinating creatures. Oh, wow. Tegus, plush-crested jays, and an adorable troop of coatis. But perhaps the most fascinating was this butterfly with transparent wings. After a long afternoon of walking and gawking, you're gonna wanna grab an empanada or two from the snack bars. And heads up, the capuchin monkeys are gonna wanna grab an empanada or two from you. Hola, hola. Ella es Carola. Hola, hello. Ella es la mejor guía aquí. Thank you, thank you. Yeah, it's a pleasure to share here with Hank and with Scott. Um, uh, I'm sorry. Scott Currens has been chasing storms since the 90s. We got another one touching down. And has the best kept secret YouTube channel for those who love beautiful tornado footage. There was no time to cash in on the fancy casino resort we crashed at. Scott forecast a chance of storms to the west. Just maybe a supercell could organize. Supercells are an organized breed of thunderstorms defined by a rotating updraft. 
Besides making them incredibly beautiful, this deep rotation enables them to become the most powerful storm cells on Earth, responsible for the majority of the planet's strong tornadoes. Tornado Alley in the United States is by far the world's prominent supercell factory. However, there are other locations around the world where they're not uncommon. Canada, Europe, Bangladesh and China, Australia, and the Tornado Corridor in Argentina, Uruguay, and southern Brazil also report these monster storms. What makes Argentina so special for storm chasers is unlike many other countries, there's chaseable road networks here. Oh, it's got a little limp. It'll be fine. Because Argentina is in the southern hemisphere, the supercells and their cyclonic tornadoes spin the other way. Scott and I invested a lot of time and money to see and document a southern hemisphere supercell. Though we successfully intercepted storms the next couple days, they weren't supercells. Scott, the sun's gonna drop below those clouds and might be kind of cool. Should I get a video of you frolicking, skipping through the sunflowers? Oh yeah, just straight off the road. We got a romantic dinner oh, together. No. <laughs> Look at this ass. Look at this log. When storm parameters are capped at lower elevations, chasers sometimes head to higher ground, hoping to get a boost from the mountains. Oi, Churrasco. Thank you. Winds forced up slope by the terrain can have a seemingly magical effect making storms. Windy. Distracted by the vastly changing majestic Andes, Scott and I had an epiphany. Twelve entire hours had gone by without an empanada. That's our storm, the storm of the day. We're trying to get to a potential convergence area for dust devil -y, land spouty thingies. Yep. So the best roads out here are no roads. Oh, there's some llamas up here. You want to say hi? Yeah, especially if we can get one of those punk rock ones. Yeah. Look at that. Dust devil outbreak. So these are happening like right at the edge of some growing cumulus, so if they could stretch it up into the cloud, we might be able to call it a spout devil. This is how you pad your stats, man. There's little llama turds going in circles. You know what? Run into it! getting covered in llama shit when you out there. That one's moving. Oh, that one is sweet. After so many different dreamy landscapes and multiple vortex intercepts, 
we had to celebrate with an old chaser tradition. Awesome. With stormy conditions forecast to return to lower elevations, Scott and I had to leave the beautiful Andes, but not empty-handed. <laughs> Hello, friend. Despite numerous stories of sabotage and failure, a shortcut down a shady dirt road is too much temptation for many chasers to resist. Not a great place to break down, get a flat, or get cannibalized by locals. You mean the locals with the giant ovens? Yes, the human-sized entrance. Escape routes seem pretty minimal out here. Just go backwards for another two hours. Three hours into our shortcut, we began to see developing storms ahead. Jungle is closing in on us. Take a left here, let's see if it looks any better. Nice. Back on the interstate. Four hours into our shortcut, we began to finally see signs of civilization. Daddy! <laughs> don't jump, don't jump. We came all the way to Argentina for this. Long day of chasing. We took a dirt road that lasted five hours. We finally got to some little thunderstorms, saw some lightning, but we couldn't get close to it. Both really tired. Welcome to our $5 hotel. We got three beds here. Scott said, too bad there aren't three other chasers here to split the cost with us. All right, come check this out. What you got going on here? What is that? Is that a bed bug up? Bug in a bed. Yeah. Oh, it just jumped. I don't think they jump like that, do they? Well, I don't know. I've never had the pleasure. Oop. Cause that's the second one I've seen. Got three beds. I mean, yeah. there, there is one good thing about all this. <laughs> this is in my room. <laughs> Enjoy. <laughs> Despite bugs in the bed, we felt our $5 rooms were better than a hole in the ground. Some species, like these burrowing owls, might argue. <laughs> Four hundred. Oh, this is a toll. Let's see how much we got here. <laughs> a lot. Sadly, Argentina has suffered a long crippling inflation. A result is people carry trash bags full of money to pay for stuff. Despite the hardships, people we met here hadn't lost their sense of humor. Now we're gonna pay for Scott. One local recommended that we hide our camera gear under piles of money when we leave our vehicle, so that nobody will be tempted to break into it. With storm conditions slightly better than yesterday, Scott and I aimed south to the Mendoza province for a possible supercell. Storms that develop in an environment with hot temperatures and low dew points, like today, tend to have high bases. These conditions can be great for viewing any lightning the storm might have, but very unfavorable for tornado genesis. So yesterday was actually okay. We got some pretty time lapses. We got some, well, a little bit of lightning, but it ain't over yet. Does that look foggy to you? It does look foggy, but the lens looks clean. It must be the humidity, right? We're finally in some good dew points. It's our last day. We've got to drive back to Buenos Aires, but we decided that what if we chased instead of driving back to the airport? And then after the chase, if we leave it early, we might be able to make the plane in time. Maybe. I'm just hoping we can squeak out a legit supercell today, you know? 
something we're we're worried about are we going to destroy the car in hail <laughs> that's a good problem to have <laughs> how fast are we going uh, oh. nine <laughs> that was just a threshold up ahead in the not so far distance appeared to be a storm capable of destroying our car with hail. 57, <laughs> 26. Oh, come on, baby. Oh, they're cheating. Come on. They're cheating. Go, 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 go. go. See through this town. We're going to see under the base see if there's any dangly bits. Oh, that base looks lower than yesterday. We got us a mean storm. After almost 10,000 kilometers of chasing through Argentina, a classic supercell exploding through setting sunlight was in our grasp. We could go here and there's a dirt road that goes along oh, here nice. on, on the south side of that river. Woo! Rather than fighting to get up close, Scott and I decided to just kick back and relish the moments as the supercell approached us. That monster, feel that inflow? Ingesting humid air from the surface, the rotating base lowered a tear as the supercell threatened to tornado. But the threat was brief. Losing daytime heating, the storm exhaled cold outflow, blasting the tornado threat away. It's about to be lightning madness. Whew. Cutting timing dangerously close to tomorrow's departure, we turn toward Buenos Aires International Airport. I can't see. Uh, I can see your edge here. Okay. One catch, the dangerous storm was about to engulf us. <laughs> Another catch was that Argentina's highway patrol was also documenting our chase. We'd like to send an extra special shout out to Scott's boys, Francis, Maxwell, and Rosby for following and supporting this adventure. Every time I call them at night, they're like, is Pecos Hank with you? <laughs> and I'm like, no, he's in another room. Hey, show them your shirt. There they are. Just want you guys to know that this shirt was our good luck shirt tonight. Because of that shirt, you guys were with us and we got the storm. Running late to the airport, we couldn't resist a shortcut through the heart of Buenos Aires. Buenos, Buenos Marte, una foto. Scott and I are at the airport in Buenos Aires. It's not over yet. We're gonna fly by a lot of big thunderstorm complexes. The plane's gonna thread the needle right through the source. Strikes, lightnings. Or absolutely nothing. Or we fall asleep. 